Hi, welcome to K Tech Designs. My name is Seth. Welcome to this tutorial on how to make a GoPro camera case, the Hero Session 5 model, with FreeCAD. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this model and the backplate that goes with it. I hope you find this tutorial informative and educational. With that, let's get started. So the very first thing you want to do is get dimensions for the GoPro, the Hero Session 5 or Hero 5 Session. The easiest way is to just Google the size dimensions, but of course you can always pull out a caliper or a ruler and take measurements of the device itself. Uh, this is pretty easy, a GoPro Session is just a square. You can see it's 38 by 38 by 36, 36, 38, and then 38 down into the screen. Now with that, we can start our model. All right, let's go ahead and create a new art. Make sure you are using the Art Design Workbench. Let's create a body, create a sketch, Pick the YZ plane for this sketch. Click OK. Now this sketch is going to be the profile of the part. Uh, I'm just going to start it like this. That's the basic profile. Now you want to add some strengths here. I want these to be parallel. And um, that should be it. Now we can get to dimensioning. Uh, I like to use the SolidWorks style mindset when using FreeCAD. Uh, I'm a long time SolidWorks user. So that's what is comfortable for me. So I like to create metric constraints about axes. Jeez. You should be vertical. Uh, and an easy way to create those symmetric constraints is to simply add a dot, a point on the other side of your axes, and then um, you click your two points and your axis of symmetry, and then click it. Click your uh, symmetry constraint. All right, that's looking good. Um, I want to also create some reference geometry, so I'm going to come over here, click my reference line. All right, now this is going to make it easy to create that chamfer angle, which should be 45. And now this represents the full length of the camera. I actually want a small gap here. Um, a little projection in front of the camera, and that should be about one millimeter. Uh, I want the length of the camera, or the face the camera sits in, to be 37. So that's one millimeter longer um, than that camera itself. So I'll have a millimeter gap on either side. The gap on this side is actually to help with the door and this is for protection of the screen. Next I wanted to mention the opening. So since I created these two points I can easily grab both of them and dimension them like this. And that should be 38.3. And the same with this side I can dim dimension these two points and make that 36. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention is this space here. This is the space on the camera uh, directly over the lens. Uh, this was a, a dimension that I measured. I did not find this online. Uh, I just used a caliper. And that dimension is 3.25 millimeters. Great, that looks good. Now we can set our wall thickness. I'm using 1.5 millimeters. 
And I want uh, this leg to be one millimeter. Technically, if this was an injection molded design, you would want to make this thickness about as equal as this. Um, it just makes the uh, injection molding process more reliable from a manufacturing standpoint. But because this is 3D printed, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're done with that sketch. Let's go ahead and close it. Now we need to create another sketch. This sketch will be the uh, path for that profile. Click the XZ plane, click OK. And I'm going to use a rectangle to start with. I'm going to create a symmetric constraint there. Click to delete the selected. It didn't like that horizontal. It's not going to like that horizontal. So I'm going to create another metric constraint here. Um, and that leg should be the inside dimension. So it's 38.3 again. Um, and then these two can be equal because we got a square. Excellent. Oh, uh, not yet. Now I want to create some fillets. Use the Constraint Preserving Sketch Fillet because we just created a um, horizontal dimension there and I don't want to lose that. Alright, now we can select all uh, fillets and give them all the same radius. Do you want to share the same radius for the selected elements? Yes. And that number should be 7, 7 millimeters. Now it looks like we've lost a constraint in doing that. There we go. Okay, so those are set. That sketch is good. Close that. Now you can see we have our profile and our path. So what I want to do is select the profile. Go up to here. Sweep along a path. And then I'm going to add my edges. Or the path. Okay. Excellent. We've got the, the biggest part of it done. <laughs> All right. Now we need to create some cutouts. We need a cutout for the charger, charging bay, and the SD card access. And we need a cutout for the LCD screen and the button. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab that surface. Click sketch. This feature is pretty easy, pretty simple. It's just a rectangular cutout. I'm going to add some reference geometry. Um, I know in FreeCAD, it's not generally good practice to do that because if you change anything in the features below, uh, before this feature, those reference names are going to change. And so the reference points are going to move. Um, I, I don't know. There's no real way around doing reference, dimensioning, reference design. Um, so I guess I just deal with it. If I break something, then I just do the work to go back and fix it. Okay. That dimension should be 2.5 millimeters. Uh, I forgot to make this symmetric. About the plane. The overall height should be 19 millimeters. And then this reference should be B6 millimeters. Move it. Close that. Select uh, create a pocket. And then I go to two first because I will uh, just pick the next base, the next feature as your depth. Click OK. Now we want to create the top. Click that face. Select sketch, 
Um, LCD screen is square, so we're going to put a square there. Um, we're going to create an attachment there to the arch, arc, and then trim. We can trim this. Nope, cannot trim that. Sorry. And trim that. And then we delete that leg and that leg. Um, delete that. Making these symmetric. Make these uh, coincident. Uh, then we need a sketch reference. Uh, I don't want that line. I did. I did notice that points seem to be a little more robust than a whole line. So I, I generally use points when I'm making a reference. This dimension should be 5.5. This leg should be 21. Uh, the thickness of that feature should be 8 millimeters. This leg, oh, uh, I should set these equal. Let's set these. You don't like that? Why not? Okay, well, now it's happy. That behaves correctly. Uh, these should be tangent. You can press T for tangent. Select your two lines to be tangent. What do you not like about that? Guess it doesn't need to be tangent there, so I will leave that off. Um, this dimension should be 5.3. This, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, why don't I dimension this quick? This should be seven. And maybe I'll just make these vertical. Okay, I like that. All right, that's the pro, or that's, yeah, that's the uh, cut profile. Go ahead and pad or cut that again to first. Be able to create. That is strange. It's telling me that it's happy. How do I get rid of that? Get rid of that. Hmm. Maybe if I get rid of the equal 17. Oh, that was a tangent constraint I didn't want. Oh, that was odd. Okay. Well, I think I fixed that now. Okay. Yeah, that was weird. Equals redundant. Oh, it's you. Okay. That fixed it. That's... <laughs> those are the kind of glitches you get with FreeCAD. It, uh, it's definitely a learning curve to uh, know what to look for. Figure out things like that. Okay, but this is looking good. The next thing I want to make is the hinge. So the hinge uh, attaches over here. And then we're going to have to make the latch over here. And then the final feature will be uh, your mounting um, your mounting feature. Okay, so to, commit, to make this hinge, it's not too difficult. We're going to click on the XY plane. And I want to create... Reference there. 
want to line out here. A line down and a line out here. Uh, I want an arch. An arc, sorry. Make those tangent. Make these tangent. And then I need a center hole. Now, when we get to dimensioning, this distance should be five millimeters. This radius, right? This radius should be 3.25 millimeters. This diameter should be 3.5 millimeters. And finally, I want to get that over these at an angle of 60. Okay, I guess I can't move that. But close. Now we're going to pad this. We're going to make it symmetric. And that dimension should be 24 millimeters. That looks great. All right, let's make the cutout at the bottom, and that's just clearance, finger clearance for pressing the uh, on-off button. All right, so that's another sketch. We want uh, the polyline. Well, the polyline like this. Trapezoidal shape. We need to add a reference here and then we're gonna make these vertical so that'll put that line this line on that reference uh, let's make these metric about this plane go ahead and delete that vertical constraint and then these points as well symmetric about that plane remove the vertical this dimension should be 21. And I actually want to create a reference here so that I can make these 45. And finally, this width should be 3 millimeters. Close that sketch, cut that to first, there. Oh, before I get too far, uh, we need to create a gap here for the back cover to mate up with the hinge. So let's create a sketch on there. That sketch is going to be just a square cutout make these two symmetric about that plane. Um, I'm going to add this point as a reference. Make those horizontal to each other. Looking good. This width should be seven millimeters. And I could make a reference point here and then make that horizontal but i think what i'm going to do in this case is simply over dimension uh, to 8.5 millimeters so that it'll cut straight through and i can limit how many reference constraints i have reference points cut or close that cut that this you can also do to first Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I want to create the latch for the cover, and that I'm going to attach to this surface. We'll click that surface, click sketch. For this 
feature, I am going to add these two references. And we'll add our line. We want to go down a little bit and then over. We want uh, these to be collinear. I'm going to add a point here. Since I know what this opening size is, I'm just going to replicate that and I'll do that by creating a symmetric point. Grab those two points. Um, of course, disoriented is actually a vertical or whatever that was. And then that's 19 horizontal. Sorry. Now I need to go back to that view, add my arc, grab these two lines, make them tangent, these two lines tangent as well. Um, and I need an arc to mimic, copy this. And I'll just dimension that right away to 8.5. Um, and I know that number because I took a measurement of the arc. Um, you could also just calculate it directly, knowing that we made this 7 millimeters and that the wall thickness is 1.5. Obviously, 7 plus 1.5 is 8.5. Uh, I want this measurement. I want to measure it in reference, in reference to this wall here. Should be 4. This arc uh, radius should be 4.25. This hole is a clearance hole, so its diameter is 3.5. It's a clearance hole for an M3 bucket head cap screw. Now you can see that's fully dimensioned. We'll close that, add that. Now when this happens, um, I, don't, I don't exactly know why, um, but if you click reverse, then your geometry should show up because it'll start uh, padding in the right direction. And then that overall pad length should be six millimeters. Now I'm adding a hex nut to this um, latch that the M3 screw goes into. So I'm gonna click this face and add a hex feature. First, I want to copy that. And then we add the hex. Uh, I don't know if it matters which leg is vertical, which orientation you use. Of course, try, yeah, because it's within this circle, um, you'll have a constant thickness, so you don't have to worry about whether the points are too close or not. Um, but out of habit, I like to make the point um, go up. I don't know. I guess it's arbitrary. Sometimes I make it horizontal. Uh, there's really no right way to do that. Um, now, actually, I want to measure this across the flats. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that dimension, and that should be 5.7. Close that sketch. This will be a pocket. Pocket should be 2.5 millimeters deep. And there you go. That looks great. We're almost done. The final major feature to add is going to be the rail mounting system. I've got two designs for that system one is just a simple hole with uh, you know a triangular feature um, and a space between two of those um, but then later on i thought well maybe a a rail would be even easier because then you could make any kind of attachment adapter um, so that's what i'm going to go with for this tutorial 
Uh, to do that, we want to create a sketch, and I want to create it about the X, Z plane. Click, I have to click my plane. There we go. Okay. We want to add at least one reference point. And this is going to be, I'm going to use a polyline for this. You could use a series of, or you could use two squares, cut, use the trim tool and cut out in the middle. Um, and that's generally what I do in SolidWorks, but FreeCAD is just a little bit different. So I, I tend to use polylines instead. Let's go ahead and make this, uh, I made those um, horizontal to each other so that my feature is attached to the bottom of this case. Um, I'm gonna add my metric constraint, delete that horizontal. I'm gonna add a symmetric here as well. Delete that horizontal. And then I wanna make these. Um, actually, I don't think I have to do that. I'll make these equal. This leg dimension should be six millimeters wide. This dimension, 14 millimeters. This thickness is 2.5. And this is four. Now you can make this whatever dimension you want. Um, and come back in and change it. Whatever works for you. Close that sketch. Add that. Reverse the direction. I want it to go all the way to the back. Well, not quite all the way to the back. Uh, we want that to go down 20 millimeters. Nice. The final thing to do now is to add some fillets. I want to fillet all of the edges on the inside of here. Uh, one millimeter fillet is fine. We'll go ahead and grab all of those edges. Click OK. That looks good. And I want to fillet these as well. Um, in my experience, this dimension will not fillet. Uh, I'm not sure why. I guess FreeCAD can't handle this intersection. Um, SolidWorks seems to handle it just fine. Uh, but regardless, uh, just going to add these three edges. And you could do all of these fillets in one feature. You don't have to do it in two. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to separate fillets from different features uh, in case you need to edit something here. Um, things could break or who knows what. Um, and then these could be filleted as well. I'll, I think I'll actually add them to the side door cutout. Now these fillets are a little bit arbitrary. You really don't need them if you're going to 3D print them because your 3D printer can't print sharp edges and features like this. Um, it kind of depends on the orientation, but even uh, sharp features like this, they won't be that sharp. Your extruder bead, your extrusion bead um, is gonna be rounded anyway. So not really necessary, but I like to do it as a matter of habit. If you're going to design something for injection molding or whatever, it doesn't hurt to put those in there. Okay, uh, we're done. Uh, you could add some fillets in here too. Uh, but again, because of the way it's going to be printed, it's going to be printed like this, your orientation of the extrusion path of your extruder path is going to be like this. And so all of these edges will be broken anyway because your 3D printer is not going to make a Hard turn. Okay.
Wonderful. Now let's move on to the back cover. Go back to the start page, click create new, and it'll make uh, a new part. Um, I've already saved it and named it so that it's showing up here until this is the body of the part we made for the GoPro case. And now this is the new uh, backplate. So we want to go to create body in tasks, create a sketch. We'll pick, pick the XZ plane, click OK. Um, get our polyline and we'll start from the bottom, point up and then over. Making uh, this funky shape here. We'll go ahead and make these points symmetric about the plane. And the same with this one, these upper points symmetric about or vertical plane. Now these should be equal. Um, I think in this case, I'm going to simply key in the dimensions for both instead of making an equal constraint. Um, if I add a fillet, uh, then I'll have to make those two resulting lines equal again. But if I create a fillet and these are already these points are already existing, then it'll be fine. I won't have to up, uh, redo anything. Um, and so this dimension uh, is picked off of the overall dimension of the case. Again, you can measure that or you can calculate it. Measuring is pretty easy. This leg dimension should be 11.15. This dimension is 10 millimeters. This dimension is 12. Want to add the reference line here that I can add my angle dimension of 45. Great, close that, pad that. The pad is 1.5 millimeters. Next, I want to create my uh, fastening, the latch feature. Um, I've made the latch feature separate from the, the base sketch, uh, just because I may want to make certain edits to it that could disrupt the larger body. Um, but you don't have to do it this way. Uh, you could make all of the features I'm about to make uh, on the root sketch and then pad it. Um, anyway, I'm going to make a sketch. I'm just going to pick the XZ plane again. I don't have to collect, I don't have to select that face uh, because we're going to pad in the same direction and the same depth. Now that I have this, I do want to create some reference points here and here. And I want to create a sketch line between those, a line out here, and a line up here. I want my arc. Oops. Attach those. For is that attachment, of course, tangent, and you can press T for tangent. Uh, I need a hole for the screw to pass through. Okay, so I've got all my features. This dimension is four millimeters, and if you remember, we made the same dimension on the camera case, so I dimension to that outer wall and then to the hole. Uh, that just makes design easier um, to dimension from the same features so that you have the same nominal. This arc should be 4.25 millimeters. Now this hole is a through hole. Clearance hole, so that's 3.5 millimeters. Okay, I'm going to update that. I can't update that. There we go. And that's good because that was tangent. Excellent. Close that. Add that. 1.5. Good. 
Now I want to create the hinge, the hinge attachment on this side. And that's a pretty easy sketch to do. We're going to click the XY plane. Uh, that's another thing that is very useful about making symmetric sketches about these planes is features can be symmetric about those planes. So you don't have to dimension or you don't have to create features off of um, body reference faces or whatever. You can use your planes uh, to make dimensioning easier. And when you get to assemblies and you need to mate things together, that helps a lot as well. All right, so this, um, let's add these two references as well. Make our line here. It uh, doesn't like that it's horizontal if it's attached to that plane. Uh, I'm going to add a little chamfer feature there. Okay, and then with those lines, we'll add our arc. T for tangent. And um, I'm going to actually add a reference line. So I'm going to make that 45. I need to add where is it? a hole here. Now this hole is actually going to be a thread cutting hole. Uh, because it's plastic, you don't actually need a a thread tapping screw to cut threads into it. Uh, they just kind of cold form out of the way. I'm going to make this diameter uh, 3.2 millimeters. Okay, I don't know why sometimes it doesn't let me grab those right away. This arc should be a 3.1 uh, radius. Move a little bit. These, this hole on this edge to be five millimeters long. And then I need the hole on this edge to be three. Now that's not quite fully dimensioned and it must be because of this chamfer here. I didn't set that size. So let's go ahead and set the size to, I don't know, two millimeters. Uh, three. Three. All right. It's a little ugly, but again, it's 3D printed, so don't worry about it. Close that sketch. Pad it. Make it symmetric. It is not happy with me for some reason. Uh, the model went away. All right. What did I do wrong? What did happen? Oh. Uh, close your sketches. That will help when making, right, make that symmetric, and again, six. Uh, if you recall, I made a cut in the case of seven, seven millimeters, so you want to make sure that this is less than that. I picked six. That will give us plenty of clearance for the hinge to move freely. Uh, let's tidy this up a bit. I want to add some... Billets, they need to be 8.5 millimeters to match the outer case billets. Um, just those two edges need that. And then these smaller edges, or these edges can use some smaller fillets. Uh, one millimeter is fine. I don't think it'll let me fill with that. 
Uh, this could use a fillet, doesn't have to. I'm going to go ahead and add the large fillet there. I'll make it look nice. Uh, you can press space bar. Range. All right, so here's a good example of what happens when you make any kind of edit. So I added fillet here retroactively. So now these two edges that I selected are gone. I don't know where they are. And they're going to be tiny. So it's going to be hard to find them. Um, so what I'm doing here is adding these back in. And the other ones that I couldn't find, you just right click and click remove. Okay. Little quirks of the program. Actually, I'm going to add, just to make it a little nicer, I'm going to add these two edges as well. Okay. Okay. Now we're pretty much done. Um, this edge actually needs, I want to countersink there. That's too large. We'll leave it at one for now. I want to use the countersink fastener here so that this surface is nice and flat. I don't want to have a large cap screw sticking out. So add a little chamfer there. It technically should be 1.7 millimeters. But if you do that, you actually cut into this surface a little bit. You won't have this flat here. SolidWorks is okay doing that. Uh, FreeCAD apparently is not happy with it, so just get close. Okay, the final thing to do on this part is to create, or create a sketch on the surface, um, a one mil millimeter thick boss feature, and that is to push up against the camera. You remember we had a one millimeter gap between the back of the camera and the back of the case. Well, we're gonna add a one millimeter feature here to fill that gap. So we have a nice tight fit with camera. I'm gonna use a polyline here. Sorry, not a polyline. We'll just um, make this square. I guess I could have used a polyline. I know that you can make offset sketches and dimension their thickness. Um, I don't think it's that important to do on this small of a feature so i'm just sketching everything out all right i want to add this edge this uh, point and this point i'm going to go ahead and make uh, these two i don't know if i can make them concentric but i can make these coincident do that I guess I'll go ahead and uh, dimension this edge. I want it to be two millimeters wide. Actually three millimeters wide. I don't want to have to do reference geometry. So what I'm going to do is create a mirrored point. Yeah, that looked good. And so that dimension should be 37.8. Now, if you remember, the inside dimension was 38.3. Uh, but I don't need this to be in contact with, or I actually don't want it to be in contact with the outer case. I want it to sit inside the case and touch the camera. Let's make this symmetric about here, though. And then uh, this one as well, metric about horizontal plane. Let's make this leg 25 millimeters. And this leg as well, 25. Oh, dear Lord. Tangent, T for tangent. 
There we go. Sorry. Um, I won't even need these. Because these should be tangent as well. All right. That is done. Close sketch. Pad it. One millimeter. Add. Add fillet. Click OK. Right, I was supposed to fill it that. Well, we're going to add it. Um, we're going to add it to this fillet feature because if I go back to one of these fillets and add this line in there, I'm going to screw up everything. So Now we're done. Now you have your back cover. and your case. And that concludes this tutorial. Please leave a like if you liked this video. Please leave a comment to let me know what you thought. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.